Or I thought I would just talk uh, a little, use my time uh, during this to talk a little bit about uh, the two archives, um, and then also what we kind of learned from some of them. Following up some of the themes, uh, I think that several of the speakers and presenters brought out yesterday, uh, in particular, in particular, trying to get at the notion of how can we include more experiences and moving away from just uh, the text and the uh, and the images. And just to give you a little background, the uh, Transnational China Project was formed in 1997 at the Baker Institute by Richard Smith, our Cheng historian at Rice, and Benjamin Lee, uh, an anthropologist who's interested in semiotics, and myself, a political scientist who's interested in decentralization and privatization. And so, what an interesting group, right? Uh, and uh, all of our discussions tend to focus around, especially when we met with the public culture people like Michael Taylor and Dilip Gayankar, focused around discussions of what are the media um, in, uh, in what are the media of uh, that might be forming uh, potential new public spheres in the future. And, uh, and, and in particular, is it how can we uh, get our students uh, to try to understand this? So we had a pedagogical focus uh, from the beginning when it came to collecting. And in particular, how can we have more images uh, that we can actually share with students and have them become involved with it? And so one of our first projects was, uh, since I'm the political scientist, I was interested more in public service advertisements. So I actually began surveys of public serve, outdoor public service ads in Chinese cities. And what we knew was that there's actually variation across cities. Chinese districts are large enough to be cities. Some of them are three or four million people. And so in 98, uh, and then every five years, 1998, 2003, 2008, and I'll do it again uh, in 2013, uh, I did surveys of five, of five districts in Beijing and five districts in Shanghai, choosing two streets in each one, collecting one image of each of the public service ads for about a mile of each of the, uh, of each of the cities and then did an analysis of them, basically showing that there is substantial variation uh, across the districts. And, uh, and uh, that there's, there are actual campaigns. There's a centralization about 10 years ago. Uh, and, but now it looks like there's actually moving back towards decentralization uh, in districts. So we'll be able to map this out. Um, and so on our uh, Transnational China Project website, the, uh, we had the, the collection of these, but also from many, many small towns as well, wherever I happen to be traveling to. And so, for example, uh, various campaigns, the spiritual civilization campaign of the 1990s, how that played out in different localities. Uh, specific campaigns about localities trying to distinguish themselves. This is Xiaoxing trying to play up the uh, Cai Yunpei and Guo Guojian, the famous individuals that came out of them. And, uh, and then we decided that we actually wanted to have a uh, to also include more commercial advertising. And uh, me being the, the political scientist saying, well, we can't just you know, uh, pick a few examples, uh, and there's plenty of other people doing that. We need to actually try and do some sampling, uh, but also come up with something which is going to be useful for a lot of people. So let's collect as much as possible and put it up in a format, uh, a digital archive, so that whoever needs it uh, can go through and use it. And uh, so that's where we created uh, the, uh, the original uh, ephemera archive of the, the Transnational China Project looking at subway advertisements. So we picked subways in Beijing, Shanghai, Taipei, Hong Kong, and Singapore. Because we were especially, initially, we were most interested in looking to see how much transnational circulation there is, uh, particularly in the Chinese language sphere. Uh, across all of these uh, uh, middle classes and, and across all of these cities. So we took a, a picture of each commercial and public service ad uh, in an annual sample of each of these subway systems. We've actually been doing this since 1998. And uh, the archive now that we have up in Geneva Henry yesterday was talking about I believe, the digital archives at our Fondren Library. We've now got from 98 to 2003 the subway advertisement archive, which you can see here. And if you click on that, you come to this slide. And uh, so you can see uh, Beijing, Hong Kong, Kaohsiung, Shanghai, Singapore, Taipei. And it's about 4,500 images uh, at this point. And if you click on one of them, uh, so these are all the ones, for example, with the, the search on the term Adidas. So it pulled up a bunch of Adidas ads, 12 Adidas ads for that time period for all those five cities. Uh, and then this is the actual record going through. And what's unique about this now is this is using DSpace, it's using software, which will allow us to be able to merge, hopefully seamlessly, with other people's archives. Uh, so the dream actually is to create a project which our archive will literally cease to exist. Uh, we're putting everything out in the space and making it searchable uh, in a way. And one of the key things we'll be doing is actually translating. 
And last year, as part of our new project from the Luce Foundation, we decided to make it uh, even much, more, much broader. And so we looked at 25 other cities around the world. So we chose Rice students and other people. We've had about 50 or 60 people working with us uh, over the years. So we went to 25 cities around the world, in Latin America, in Europe, all the different subway systems, uh, and did the same thing. That's going to take us two or three years, because it's about eight or nine languages uh, to actually translate and to do all of those. Uh, and so that will be put up probably the next year and a half or so. We'll have those all up. And as part of that as well, uh, I thought uh, I should talk a little bit about how this has been put to use. We've used it in our classes. Uh, we have an Asian uh, kind of a core Asian studies course uh, on social science approaches that Ratish and I will be teaching. And we use the archive for that. And it's, in, it's just fascinating to look to see what the students have chosen to do. We ask them to use the images from the archive, but if they want to bring in other you know, advertisements as well, try and test some theory in some way or discuss some to critique some theory that uh, came up in class by using the advertisements. And so the one is representations of notions of safety beer, transnational perceptions of masculinity. And some of them are quite, you know, bring out the really the creative side. And these are just the ones from 2010. These are just the titles, actually, that the student, titles of the presentations of the students. And each one has maybe 20 slides. But you can see it's a wide range of things of people, students wanting to go into advertising, marketing, to nationalism, uh, key notions of, of gender, race, ethnicity uh, are key things that uh, the students are interested in. Skin whitening, racial branding, uh, portrayals of Christmas in different localities. Uh, there's some fascinating things, things that would never have occurred to me. Uh, so at this point, uh, we'll, we'll actually be extending it um, and, and making it in a more user-friendly format. But it's up there on the Fonder and Digital Archive. So if you have uh, students that you would like to, to work on, uh, we'd love to hear more back uh, on that. And so <clears throat> the last part I'm going to talk about is now that we've created this uh, enormous archive, this large project, uh, which is heavily focused on using text right, to locate images. Right? It's heavily driven by text. I thought I should talk a little bit about what is not included in the archive. Okay? And to specifically go around, and so I decided over the last month and a half when I was in Shanghai and in Beijing, I'm going to go around and collect images that I would never collect. Uh, rejects. I will go collect rejects, basically. Things that would not be included in the archive. And, uh, and so hundreds of images, and, and so I've, I located some themes. I think that expose some of the weaknesses in our archive, but also bring out, I think, some of the things that, that, that you were talking about as well. One of the ones that's very clear, uh, and it's not just in the subways, of course, it's also above ground as well, is, is inequality. And uh, I think if you, just looking at advertisements, uh, these are commercial ads, but just looking at advertisements, the clearest, sharpest, most so-called sophisticated visually ones would be the ones in the subways uh, in China. So here's one for Shanghai uh, for jewelry. Uh, here's one for uh, right, so some songs. Youth is very, uh, very, very strong. Tani, here's your mentholatum. Uh, there, there's, a, there's a Korean actress as well, but this is Rain, right? Uh, that's right. Oh, they, they. Okay. And uh, so there's a lot of those. Uh, but even the public service ads, um, and this is, these are ones obviously for, uh, for, for, for pregnancy. There's several of those. But they're all competing with each other, the commercial and the, the public service ads. So in the subways, there's, there's a, there's, the public service ads are much, much more sophisticated uh, in that sense uh, than the ones uh, above ground. This is one for, uh, it's actually for the, the advertising company, but they're putting out a public service ad as well about the environment. This is uh, about the Shanghai subway system and the people working there, the women of the Shanghai subway system, some fascinating things in there. And then just one about fire safety, of course, in the subways. So those are the most advanced ones. And if you go above ground and you go to certain districts in the city, so Changning District is one of those districts which it was kind of industrial in the past, but it also is a place where a lot of wealthier people live uh, in Shanghai. This is an advertising you might see for moving forward into the future, presumably without airplanes flying so close overhead. Here's a family. This is Yangpu District, where I'm actually currently based, Tongji University, Fudan University, that area. These are actually, the next set of ads are actually around the perimeter of Tongji University. So you, you can see they're all fairly, they're crisp pictures of a modern skyline and of a city. Um, 
There's interesting changes in the calligraphy, which I won't go into. I'm showing you a lot of ads, and I'm going to flip through them very quickly. It's actually easier if you don't read Chinese uh, to catch what I'm talking about, because like, as I said, I'm not, I'm not interested in the text uh, for these. But lots of modern images, even when the nature is interfering, it somehow looks bucolic. There's some more. There's another one as well. This is actually uh, lots of banners, more temporary ones. This is to get out and vote for the elections so for the National People's Congress just recently. This is on the campus. This is Chaoyang District in Beijing, which is kind of an analogous district in Beijing. They have a civilized, you can see it in the upper left-hand corner, civilized Chaoyang. You can see there's a more kind of playful. They're competing with cartoons in some ways. Even their banners, this is a, a, health, a health campaign. Along the middle of the street, there's a lot of embassies in that area. The, there's some high rises, very expensive high rises that are surrounded by a whole series of these. And then if you go to Shanghai and go to Huangpu District, the old southern district area, the old Chinatown, uh, and walk around in that area, and you have a lot of small individual houses uh, and small uh, property owners. There are public service advertisements, but they're, they're attached to the walls of individual houses. They're not attached to work units, they're not public spaces. It's a public thing put onto somebody's house, basically, and they, they can't complain about it, presumably. Uh, but this is about the, the responsibilities of people living in this area. This is put out by a, a subcommittee, a subdistrict authority. These are tiles. This is obviously an older one, telling people about being civilized. You can see it's got the, uh, oops, you can see it's got the, uh, the air conditioner cord, you know, some type of cloth up there. So we're getting into the experiences of it, right? This is a part of the city where the public service ads are, they become part of the background and part of the everyday life. Whereas the ones in the other ones, somebody is responsible for maintaining them. In these, they're up and then who knows what happens after that. Here's another one as well. People are beginning to stick stickers on them. This one, the paint from above, is washed down below. There's, a, there's an ad stuck onto it. This is a sub-district as putting out its own. Um, they, they chose to talk about four or five things that people should be doing, as opposed to what the, the larger entity says. This is what your small little district says. And then, of course, blackboards uh, are another way of personalizing it. Uh, and of course, people in this area would be, they would know who this person was uh, who wrote this and be familiar with their calligraphy. And of course, the style of calligraphy also matters as well. And then I found a whole series of these very small little signs. They're only about this big, four or five inches uh, across. And they're all small and they're all about maintaining security and safety, uh, being more civilized, look out for people. And there's two of them stuck above a mailbox just outside of a, a group of, of small private homes. Uh, here's another one as well. These are obviously from the, the 80s or 90s. Uh, they've been around for quite a while. There's another one as well. There's a whole bunch of them. Um, and then uh, you can see people begin to stick things on them. This is actually a quote from somebody, uh, from a philosopher. This is actually a quote from Shakespeare, translated in the middle of this. Uh, who knows what campaign? This will be worth investigating. There's also what I call the living room effect, and that is the fact that public spaces in, in different parts of the city are used in different ways. Uh, I think that this fountain that they put in in the, in the southern district, I think, exemplifies this very well. They put in a nice new modern fountain to show that this is the, the rebirth of the old city. Here's a nice new modern fountain. And because it's a very sunny day, and you don't get many sunny days in winter, everybody brings out their blankets and throws them over it to, to dry them out uh, and, and to make maximum use of it. Uh, the, the workers in the subway have uh, very thoughtfully placed all these little stands in front of uh, the nice big grand uh, campaign telling people to celebrate the 90th anniversary of the founding of the Chinese Communist Party. But the workers, well, they're not responsible for that. Let's just put those over there. Beijing, here's one about uh, developing spiritual civilization in Beijing and somebody, you know, forgot to add in that one little bit to, to make the banner readable. <laughs> Or, this is my favorite, this is about fire safety. And uh, it's a little water, it's got a group of water coolers, bra, underwear, uh, just about everything you can think of. Um, and this one, actually, the sun hitting it uh, was very, very striking. But, uh, you know, there's uh, putting banners up in these, these small back alleys makes it very hard for people to see them, actually, uh, and to read. Uh, garbage, they're putting a lot of them around garbage places because, recycling areas, because that's where people go. 
uh, in this case, <laughs> you can see that the, the, the public announcements are stuck on the wall behind, and they've gotten some of the, uh, the extra little bit that's come off of the garbage. Uh, this is about a, a, a sanitation campaign, actually. Uh, the other fact in this, it's, it's actually becoming harder and harder to take pictures of public service ads in China because there are so many cars now, and they park them now freely in front of whatever. So you can see here's a, a public service ad, and the car is parked too close to it. Uh, people are parking cars on sidewalks now. You couldn't see these from the street. This is even in the, the, the nice district because the cars there are, are blocking the view from the street. This is one of my favorites. That, that's a car in the foreground with cloth and stuff because uh, all the stuff on the glass in the back is actually bird poop uh, from a colony of birds apparently up in the trees. And then uh, that's a series of government announcements. And over it, somebody stuck an announcement as well. Okay, so, but just that mix of public and private and bird poop, um, I, I think uh, that sends a very different message that our archive is completely unable to capture, right? Uh, the, the, this, this also implies disrespect um, as well for the public or public service to some degree, or neglect, if nothing else. Or just walking along the street, you can see in between a, a blanket that's being hung out to dry and a car, something about a, 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 a committee is, is propagating this. And then you look at another section and you can see a little bit more of it, something about a, a more of a committee. And now we can see the full thing if you walk a little bit further on. So there's a part about uh, it's actually hard to see these. Uh, there's also a lost in transmission effect of putting public service ads on top of other public service ads. Uh, there's another one hidden behind this one. Uh, somebody got lazy and just stuck another one behind. The neglect. People were talking about neglect and dust. I think dust was something that came up yesterday. Here's plenty of old campaigns covered in dust. Uh, this is actually for voting, but it's, uh, it's actually from the years before. Here's one for, uh, that was uh, from the Expo in Shanghai in 2010, uh, telling people, uh, you know, I'm a civilized citizen of, of Shanghai. And here's one that's been completely washed out by the sun. Okay, but it's still stuck up there. Here's one that somebody just painted over one of them. <laughs> It's called the Please Pay Attention Public Service Ads. Uh, these are usually written by local people telling, this one basically is telling people, do not just throw your stuff wherever. <laughs> Here's one handwritten, don't just throw your stuff wherever, garbage. This one actually says, would a good cadre uh, go and check out the situation there? So this is a res uh, somebody replying to, uh, to these types of uh, uh, other announcements there. These are called the propagandists in all of us in the sense that they're obviously local level people um, who uh, are bringing out their more creative side. This is one about cleaning up uh, Shanghai, but it's obviously done by local artists. There's some serious calligraphy work here. Uh, somebody in Beijing uh, in that district has some, uh, some calligraphy skills they really want to show off and they put it on a blackboard. Say so our space is my space for privatization. You know, here's a government sponsored one talking about you know, preserving morality and, uh, and the motherland. That's what it looks like in, the, in its other version, although this one still got hit by paint. This one is uh, the remainder of a private ad is, is still stuck on the top on, of, of there, so it's added in a new character uh, into the phrase. Here's some, uh, Chaoyang District actually has a fair number of Koreans, so here's some, some graffiti added on next to some of the, the green ads, so adding in graffiti would add in another very large element to this. I saw Great Walls and Aircraft Carriers. There are also enormous ads uh, being put out uh, just to compete with very, very large commercial ads as well. Um, and so, you know, here's a, at the street level, uh, talking about uh, national uh, sanitation and health issues, and you can see the very large uh, ads. This is also of Nanjing Road, a main shopping district in Shanghai. You can see how small the people are. He's trying to walk by these things. There's another ad there as well. And then, what, and then the, the last part I should talk about is what I call hiding in plain sight. Um, it's, it's really hard to know what to collect sometimes when you're walking along a busy street, especially in China when you're worried about getting hit by a car, a bus, a trike, or you know, thousands of people. So uh, one thing is I just said, well, you know, I have noticed there's more and more of these stenciled things being stuck on walls uh, of all sorts. Uh, a lot of them are for office space or office supplies or stamps and things like this that you need for offices. There's a lot of them stuck on, you know, on all kinds of things. That's a phone number. You're supposed to call that number if you, if you need whatever it is they're advertising. And there's li these little cards like this, you know, like we would use them as a name tag. 
uh, but advertising the same thing. And so they're stuck all over the place. Uh, they're they're uh, red and they're blue. Uh, they're torn down. They stick on things. This is for marriage investigations. And then there's this one. You know, and I couldn't figure out uh, what this was. Do our Chinese speakers know what this one is? It says, Tian Yao uh, Zai Zhong Gong. Yeah, yeah, Tui Yan. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, and so Bao Ping An. And so this is actually Falun Gong. Um, and, and there's actually a campaign of Falun Gong of resistance uh, by taking stencils. Uh, and in this case, somebody just wrote it by hand and stuck it on there. So the interesting thing is that Chinese urban spaces are covered and all, all the walls are covered in these little things and it's only if you happen to walk up and look really closely. So that's what I call hiding in plain sight uh, that they, they created these. And it's also the, the risk of getting caught, uh, of course, is, is fairly low. You could ride it out, walk along and just slap it up on a wall when nobody's looking, you know, and keep on going as well. That's also, of course, going to be very hard to capture uh, in an archive. So hopefully that shows us some of the things that uh, I, I think that it'll be very hard for us to include in our archive, although I think some of the discussions yesterday were talking about interviews with, including the archivists, uh, but also interviews with the people who are actually making uh, some of the ads and how they interact, maybe some oral histories about people living there. It'd be nice to even have some, uh, some films uh, of a period, uh, walking, uh, taking pictures of people walking by to look to see if they pay attention, how they pay attention, uh, what they might do. Uh, so there's all kinds of ways that we can kind of make the archive uh, get into the issues you all were talking about yesterday, capturing experiences uh, and not just text and images. So.